Hi everyone, welcome to part two of Ocean Warming. My name is Natalie and I'm happy to be teaching this lecture today. I am a physical oceanographer and I recently completed my PhD in climate sciences at Scripps Institution of Oceanography. I got interested in the ocean not only because I wanted to serve waves on cool boards like this one back here, but also because I was very curious to understand what are the interactions between the physical environment and the ecosystem? When I was studying at Scripps, I had this great opportunity of going on a research cruise to Palau Islands. Palau Islands are in Indonesia. So these are some cool pictures of me kayaking around the islands and also taking some sea surface temperature measurements from the ship. Today, we're going to be talking about ocean warming and some of its most important consequences. And you may be wondering, why do we care about ocean warming? I would like to start mentioning some of the main consequences of ocean warming. Some of you may know that one of the most immediate consequences is of course the melting of ice sheets. This will lead to sea level rise that will also affect coastal populations. Moreover, events such as hurricanes and ocean heat waves may become more extreme or more common. Hurricanes are formed from the interaction of warm, moist air with, uh, with warm ocean water. So the warmer the water, the stronger the hurricane becomes. So one of the most immediate and most dangerous uh, consequences of ocean warming is that hurricanes will become more common and also stronger, and also the rainfalls associated to them will be higher. Other extreme events that occurs naturally in the ocean, but not so frequently, are marine heat waves. Marine heat waves are characterized by unusually warmer ocean conditions. Some of you may remember the famous blob that happened in 2015, which conditions actually remain for several years after. The blob of 2015 was characterized by unusually warmer conditions all along the US West Coast, but also these conditions extended into the deeper ocean. Okay, maybe you won't remember this huge spot of warm water, but you might remember going down La Jolla shores or other beach in Southern California and noticing some unusual uninvited guests. These crab-like organisms are actually a type of tiny, tiny lobster and they're commonly known as tuna crabs. Tuna crabs are pelagic, meaning that they live in the deep ocean and not so much on the beach, but they're also not very strong swimmers, so they drift with the tide the currents, and the winds. Tuna crabs typically live off the coast of Baja California and their habitat extends down to South America. So why were they on the beaches of Southern California during the blob of 2015? During warm events, when Southern waters move forward, the tuna crabs ride the currents up to Southern and Central California. The blob in 2015 imprinted changes in ocean temperatures, but it also altered patterns, biological patterns, leading to a red crab invasion in Southern California beaches. So what happens to the physical environment of the ocean during these events? Events as the blob, are a good example of how the ecosystem may respond under warmer ocean conditions, and this is why it's so important to study them. During events as a blob, the winds that usually keep the sea surface temperature cool along the US West Coast are weakened. As the sun warms up the surface of the ocean, and with little wind to pull it down, the heat accumulates and this is what led to the formation of the blob in 2015. And actually these conditions persisted into several years until the ocean started cooling down again. So these changes in the physical conditions of the ocean leads to changes in the ecosystem 
through changes in the food web. The base of the oceanic food web is composed by phytoplankton, which are tiny photosynthetic organisms who are the primary producers of the ocean. They are very sensitive to changes of light and temperature. And of course, these changes at the base of the food web cascade to higher levels and affect the little animals that eat phytoplankton, essentially copepods and krill, but they also affect top predators like fish, fish like anchovy, sardines, and of course, they also affect bigger predators like whales. All these changes in, in the food web um, were involved in the red crab invasion during the blob of 2015. Some other impacts of the blob of 2015 were migration of species like anchovies and tuna to the north seeking for cooler waters, decrease of creole population, harmful algal blooms like this one in the picture right here of uh, La Jolla shores, and algal blooms are essentially an explosion of phytoplankton uh, close to the beach. And all these changes led to, to important alterations in the food web. And of course, this also affected the fisheries. Another important consequence of rising ocean temperatures is the melting of ice sheets. But how can we measure this effect? In 2002, NASA launched satellite GRACE, which measures changes in the local pool of gravity as waters shift around the Earth due to the change of the seasons, weather, and climate processes. This same technique, based on uh, tracking changes of gravity, was used to map the surface of the moon in 2012. From GRACE measurements, scientists were uh, able to track changes in the ice mass of Antarctica for the last year since 2002. The time record shows a decrease in ice mass, revealing that Antarctica is losing 149 billion of tons of ice per year. Now, for me, it is hard to picture this number. So just to put it in perspective, let's think about it in, let's say, number of elephants. This is roughly 149 billion of elephants. Now let's take a look into the Northern Hemisphere and see what's happening to the ice mass of Greenland. From 2002 to the present, Greenland has lost 279 billion of tons of ice per year. So this, of course, if we see it in elephants, this is just too many elephants. 279 billion of elephants per year melting into the ocean, and of course, contributing to sea level rise. Let's remember that the ocean is the Earth's big, biggest heat bucket. So it takes up over 93% of excess heat in the atmosphere. So in summary, and as a consequence of this, has CO2 and other greenhouse gases in the atmosphere, increase the heat, the ocean will likely take up that heat. And then events like the blob of 2015 may become the new normal in the oceans. Hurricanes will become stronger worldwide and ice sheets will keep melting at a rate of many, many elephants per year. This of course will contribute to sea level rise and the ecosystem and human coastal populations will be affected. All of these are just some of the immediate consequences of ocean warming, and they should encourage populations and leaders to regulate our carbon emissions. So this is all for the lecture today. If you have any questions, please reach out to your teacher or to the team of Stay Cool. Thank you.